Hey everyone, and welcome to The Huddle. It is great to spend some time with you today, and I have a special guest with me today. I'm excited about introducing to you the mayor of Little Rock, uh, which is Frank Scott Jr. Uh, mayor Scott, thanks for coming on. Um, a couple things about you. You are a native Arkansan, as I am. You were, you were born in the state and have been all over the state, been a banker at First Security, and since 2018, you've been the mayor of our capital city, Little Rock, Arkansas, which would, when I was a kid, that was, that was the biggest city I'd ever heard of or been to. But <laughs> I'd love for you to talk about a bit, a bit about who you are, because as I was reading about you, learned about you, you you've had a lot of careers and there's a lot there. So I'd love for uh, our audience to know more about you. Oh, well, thank you so much, John. Uh, it's truly a pleasure to be with you uh, and being the state's capital city mayor to receive a phone call uh, from the U.S. president of Walmart, I tell you, is a highlight of the career. So uh, thank you and, and your leadership and what you're doing to continue to not only sustain, but grow and help Walmart thrive and you and your associates. So thank you from that standpoint. Uh, a little bit about myself, born, raised, and I still reside in Southwest Little Rock. Um, graduate of Little Rock Parkview Arts and Science Magnet High School, uh, which is the best high school in uh, the city of Little Rock. Uh, the only time that I spent outside of college, outside of the city of Little Rock, uh, was when I went off to college at the University of Memphis, came back, and as you shared, uh, in a short amount of time, I'm 37, I've had a number of different careers. Uh, started out uh, working for uh, one of your competitors. We won't say their name. I think it's called Target. Uh, so I was a Target distribution manager in Mall Mail for two years. Uh, after that, worked about five years for Governor Mike Beebe as his director of intergovernmental affairs and deputy director of policy. Uh, while working for him, I went to school at night to get my MBA at the University of Arkansas Little Rock. Uh, then transitioned to banking uh, at First Security Bank, where I worked there for seven years. And while there, I was uh, Arkansas State Highway Commissioner. Uh, and then uh, in 2018, 2017, I decided to uh, run for mayor uh, and was elected. Um, on December 4th, uh, becoming the 73rd mayor and first elected uh, black mayor of our city. Um, as you know, as I share with you, I ran to be the mayor of the entire city of Little Rock, uh, not the black mayor of Little Rock. And so our whole internal why has been how do we unite Little Rock and focusing on uniting, growing and transforming the state's capital city. Uh, so really excited about the work that we've had the opportunity to do now two and a half years. Uh, I did not expect uh, during this period of time to lead through a hundred year flood, um, a global pandemic, a historic snowstorm, social and civil unrest and a political insurrection. Uh, but uh, it's been a lot and we're excited about it, but learned so much throughout the way. Yeah, it, it is a lot, Mayor. And, and you know, I, I forgot about the flood. There's been so many things happened. It, it, it was massive. And you know, just just to get in the office and all these things happen in a row. I think the thing about leadership is, is is it starts with the word. You have to lead, and you have to lead in all situations. And I was I was really curious what it what it must have been like to become the mayor of the city you grew up in. And and people know you probably as 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 baby Frank and teenager Frank and adult <laughs> Frank. But now hey, you've got this big job, and and as you said, you're trying to lead the entire city united. What what has that been like? Well, uh, it's being the mayor of Little Rock uh, and being a son of Little Rock. Uh, it's truly my dream job. I, you know, I'm having the time of my life, uh, even though we're experiencing so many different things. As I was telling someone the other day, I'm just expecting locusts to come. And so <laughs> when we've seen so many different things come about. Uh, but this is my dream job. I love it. Uh, it gets us the opportunity to truly uh, take our city to the next level. Uh, but you're right, uh, being grown up here, um, so many people have different relationships with me, uh, whether it's being mayor, associate pastor, a banker, community leader. Uh, I have a nickname I won't share today, but there's so many people who know my nickname and they still call it today. Uh, and so uh, it's fun. But like I said, with Little Rock being one of the most progressive and forward thinking cities in Arkansas, uh, we have to always be more progressive, more forward thinking on how we truly focus on on uniting our city, focusing on growth and transformation. And that's what we're trying to do is figure out how can we be the catalyst of what we're deeming as the new South. A couple of things you said there that stuck out from our first, first call is, is the focus on transformation, growth. We, you know, we talk about that in business quite a bit. So just, just love to hear how Little Rock has changed over your lifetime. And since you got, came back from Memphis and went to work, I'd love to hear about the changes in the city. 
Yeah, I still remember when um, Little Rock's downtown was very small uh, and ended at the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, But we really started to see a lot of transformation in the mid 90s uh, and really uh, with the growth of the river market. Then in 2004, uh, you saw the growth of the Clinton Presidential Library, uh, which has brought about three billion dollars in economic impact. Uh, And then now with our ardent focus on parks and trail system. And also we've been working with the Walden Family Foundation and Stuart and Tom uh, with help with our Pinnacle State Mountain, Two Rivers Park, the Big Dam Bridge. We truly are becoming a uh, parks and trails and cyclist destination for the South. And we're really excited about that. So that's really been the transformation there. Uh, But we've really seen a lot of economic growth uh, these past uh, now close to 30 months that we've been in office. Uh, Historically, uh, we had entered a period of stagnation as it relates to our economy. Uh, And but the last two and a half years, we've recruited and announced close to 5000 new jobs. And we're hoping to double that by the end of the year. But more importantly, is we've been having a greater focus on existing businesses right here in our city, small businesses, which really make up the backbone. And so what we want to do as we're focused on a number of different initiatives, one is called our Rebuild the Rock proposal, is how do we transform because we firmly believe that quality of life in place is the new economic development model. And so we are, have plans in place to revitalize War Memorial uh, Park and Stadium to make it our Central Park or a Piedmont Park right here in our city. Well, fan- fantastic news. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit biased. I love the outdoors. I love cycling. I, every, everything you said is on my to-do list every time I'm, I've got any time not at work. But it is a beautiful state it's a beautiful city it's a beautiful beautiful part of the country so for those of you that want to do more cycling or get outdoors whether it's little rock northwest arkansas hot springs and there's so many destinations that are that are popping up it's fantastic the the thing about business that i'm so excited to hear you talk about is is growth transformation and retention and we want to make sure that we're creating jobs for people and and those jobs are fair and equitable and accessible to everyone. So just you know, two things. And I look, I, I know you're super busy and this is, this is um, great. And I could take all day talking to you, um, but love to hear um, about, you know, the impact of having large companies like ours in the city. I also look to hear about, you know, brands like, you know, you know, lost, lost 40 beer. That's a local brand there in Little Rock that we're selling is, and it's doing really well. So you know, just the way that you think about connecting those, those small, newer companies with, with the older, bigger companies would be great. So if, if you're thinking about starting a business, you know, why, why not choose Little Rock? Well, first, I just, I really want to take time just to share appreciation to you and Walmart and the entire organization, because uh, your organization chooses to remain in Arkansas. Uh, You do not have to be in Arkansas. Uh, You truly are uh, uh, a great example of a homegrown business uh, with a spirit of entrepreneurship that has seen so many different iterations in its growth. Uh, And is truly now a global leader, uh, a global player on both business and public policy. And so I want to take time with the amount of work that Doug has been doing as relates to racial, racial and equity. Uh, policies and leaning in, but not only racial and equity policies, but also on sustainability uh, and the work that you're going to be doing now with the new uh, headquarters that's going to be built. That helps make Arkansas look good. It helps us be front and center on forward movement. And so we need to have more companies like Walmart. So thank you. But also, uh, we're very grateful that Little Rock has a Sam's Club. Little Rock has a number of different uh, Walmart stores that are providing jobs. Uh, in our city and well-paying jobs in our city uh, and so grateful for that. And so we have to have that. But in the same grain, while we always want corporate jobs and corporate companies and, and the uh, the remnants of that in, in an individual city, we have to have small businesses because that truly is the backbone. And so when you talk about Lost 40, uh, thank you. But I also want to say thank you because you guys carry uh, West Rock Coffee, which is another homegrown business that has grown uh, overnight over the past few years under the leadership of Scott Ford. Uh, but we truly are a food city uh, here in Little Rock. Uh, so whether it's Lost 40, uh, Heights uh, Tacos and Tamales, uh, or you go to Copper Grill, Reduno, uh, 42 Bar and Lounge, uh, Cash, uh, Baja Grill. I can go. I'm a big foodie. I'm getting, I'm getting a little hungry right now, right about now. So thank <laughs> you for sharing uh, a lot of our businesses. And that's what it's about is having that diversity in the product and the diversity um, in the experience when you come to Little Rock or whether it's in Northwest Arkansas. 
one of the things that I think about a lot in business is, is innovation and, and innovation is, is to me, it's, it's not necessarily invention of things that are completely new. It's building on to ideas we've had in the past and, and transforming what you talked about. The, the thing that is also difficult about transformation is it requires change. And the first time we talked on the phone, you repeated a quote to me I'd love to talk a bit about, and I've, I've used it no less than 25 times, maybe 50. So sorry, oh, wow. for, the, sorry for the plagiarism, but it, but it's <laughs> with me. And I, I think what you said was you had read a quote of a speech recently, and the quote was to never let nostalgia become the enemy of vision. So mm. don't be so anchored to what has gotten you where you are that you're unwilling to move forward and go where you see the world's going. So I'd love to just talk about that for a second where you heard it and, and it sure made an impact on me. So uh, interesting, uh, Dr. Philip Pointer, uh, who happens to be, um, uh, so he happens to be the pastor of St. Mark Baptist Church. And so uh, he had just had a sermon and that stuck with me and the things that I was dealing with here in Little Rock. While I focus a lot about unity and growth, I'll talk a lot about transformation. And transformation is really just a nicer word for saying change. And so um, and many times people love to talk about change. But as you know, change is hard uh, and it takes time. And many times you are uh, dealing with forces and principalities and powers who don't want to change because it impacts them and doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the overall organization. And so uh, that quote has been something that I've kind of really uh, kept in my forefront as I deal with our team and with different organizations to show that for Little Rock to be its best version of itself, it has to change. It has to transform. And we have to stop. Nothing's wrong with the past. We have to understand it. We have to learn from it. We have to affirm it. Uh, but we should not allow the past dictate our present and our future. And so many times people get caught up in nostalgia about all oh, the good old days. Well, it's a new day uh, and it's a new era. And we have to change with the times as we move forward. Yeah, that's progress. I, I, I used to say to, to people quite a bit, we have to respect the past, manage the present and build for the future, which, yeah. is, which, is, which is, I guess, a more uh, rational way of saying the quote, which is don't let nostalgia become the enemy of vision. And it's, it's not at all. I, I've used it a lot. I hope you don't mind. No, please do keep using it. I, I stole it from somewhere else, too. <laughs> <laughs> good ideas happen that way. Very good. But it's, it's great progress. And Mayor Scott, um, your, your your resume, the reason I wanted you to mention, I don't know how you've had to have time to do all that in 37 years and you must not sleep. I know I'm 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 pretty busy and I can't imagine taking on all the things you do. But uh, congratulations to you and the success of the city. Um, know, know that um, we're, we're a big partner here. And, it, and it's just great to get to highlight for the people that, that listen inside the company and outside, just to highlight the the character of person that you are, and knowing that you're you're homegrown there in the city, in the state, and uh, just a real real pleasure to get to spend time with you. Thanks for everything you're doing. Thank you so much, John, and again, appreciate you, your leadership in Walmart. <laughs>